take an exaggerated breath in and pause. Exhale, let it go. Just like that, inhale and pause. Exhale, let it go. One more time, a generous breath in and pause. Exhale, let it go. And now lower the chin to the chest and roll the head slowly, gently over to one side. Just as gently over to the other side. Changing again, side to side. When the chin is back at center, pause there for a moment, and on an inhale, slowly raise the chin not to the maximum range of motion, just to where it's comfortable, and then lower the chin back down. Just like that again, use the rhythm of your breath, inhaling on the way up, and exhaling on the way down. Just like that. When the chin is back at center, tilt the head over to the right, return to center, and then over to the left, and back to center, over to the right, and center, changing sides and center one more time each side good as you return to center now with the head tall, pure rotation, look over one shoulder, pause there. Look over the other shoulder, pause there. Return to center, look over your right shoulder and use your, left, your right hand, so it's the same hand that you're looking back toward and we'll do a little isometric exercise. I've been playing around with this lately for releasing neck tension. So your hand is preventing your head from looking over your shoulder more. And your head is saying, no, 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 but I want to look over my shoulder. And in the middle, nothing is really moving. There's just that sense of isometric resistance. And then relax the resistance. And do it again as you exhale. Sitting tall, resisting, head into hand, hand into head, and then relax the resistance. One more time. Resist, hold, relax the resistance. Release the arm, come back to center, change sides. Look over the left shoulder, and now left hand, same thing. Grow tall as you inhale, make sure you're nice and tall. Exhale, resisting. 
Inhale, relax the effort. Exhale, resist. And again, relax the effort. Exhale, resist. Keep breathing, but hold the resistance. Gently release, return to center. We'll do one more, a third rotation, but with a different resistance this time, coming from the opposite side. So as you look over your right shoulder, now it's the left hand, and this hand's job is to prevent your head from looking forward again. Same idea though, nothing actually moves. You're still looking over your right shoulder, but the hand is right there. Resisting and releasing. Resisting, releasing. Resist and hold, keep breathing, but hold the resistance. And then release the resistance and the hand. Bring the head back to center and change sides. As you look over the left shoulder, now it's the right hand on the head. Make sure that you're sitting tall and looking generously over the shoulder. Then start the resistance. On an inhale, releasing the effort. On an exhale, resisting. And on this last one, hold the resistance, but not the breath. Unwind gently, release, take the shoulders up, forward, back, and around, generously moving. Go the other way. And now, Take the arms out to the sides, up overhead, inhale, exhale out to the sides and down, just like that again, inhale, and exhale one more time, almost like the air is thick and you're lifting it up, there's a little resistance in your hands. And exhale, pushing the air down. Take the right hand to your side and the left hand to your head. Lengthen up. Feel the space on the sides of the rib, mid ribs, making room. Room for the breath, clearing out some of the cobwebs. If you like, reach the left arm up and over. and keep guiding the breath into this side where there's extra space. Imagine the left lung and the rib cage filling up and expanding more than it has in days. Keep the torso and the head tilted over, raise the left arm and reach it back behind you. We'll add a little side stretch to the neck here. The arm comes down toward the floor, but not all the way. And then rotate the arm. Turn the head. Breathe. And then slowly and gently bring yourself back to center and we change sides. Left hand goes out to the side, right hand starts out behind the head. Stay rooted. Part of what helps us to get extra length in the right side is anchoring the right side of your seat while the elbow is reaching up. And whenever you like. Reach the top arm up and over, and each breath guided into the right side, expanding the right lung, 
making space between the ribs as they fan open with each breath in, easy in the shoulders, inhale, exhale, take another breath here, and then stay in the side bend, but raise the top arm and bring it down, not all the way to the floor, just low. You'll know you're in the right neighborhood when you start to feel some stretchiness in the side of the neck. From there, consider rotating the lifted arm, rotating the head, and just take care. If you find anything that's sharp in there, detour around it, aim for the stretchy sensation. We're really looking to, especially right now, create conditions where the body can let go of some layers of tension that might be living in there right now. Release the arm, slowly come up to center, take your time. Lift the shoulders and lower them down. Lift them again and squeeze. Lower them down one more time. Lift and squeeze and hold a little extra this time. And let it go. Take the arms, kind of ballet style arms, like a round arm. And then squeeze the shoulder blades together. Feel the muscles on the upper back. And then round, make space in the upper back. Give yourself a hug. I need more hugs lately. How about you? And then slowly raise the elbows. Take the elbows up as high as they can go while they're crossed over. And then open up and release. Let's do that one more time. Make the round shape with your arms. Elbows are helping, but mostly it's the upper back muscles that are squeezing the shoulder blades together. Give them a good squeeze back there. And then cross the arms again. Opposite arm on top if you know which one was there first. Otherwise, whatever way they land. Breathe into the upper back. And now raise the elbows. Keep them crossed over as long as they can. And then Open the arms up overhead, inhaling, reaching up, and exhaling, releasing down. Now one shoulder at a time, a generous shrug. Go the other way. And release. Let's come on down to our backs into a happy shoulders layout. <laughs> Come on to your back, and we'll hug the knees into the chest and do a little core. And so, remember, I think you guys may have all heard this before, but if there's some issue with the sound quality, feel free to wave your arms around to get my attention. That'll usually catch my attention. Um, if that doesn't work, unmute yourself and, and call out to me. And then from here, let's see, I just feel like I'm so far away. <laughs> so far away. I'm going to tilt this down so you can see me. I think maybe a little, yeah, a little better up closer. So from here, hug the knees, rock side to side. That's it, yeah. And I don't have to see all of you, but as, as long as I can see some of you, like a knee or an arm or something, that's good. Take the feet down flat to the mat, and let's do a little bit of our pelvic clock to tune into the muscles and the gentle movement. Wake up the abdominal muscles, the back. Arms rest. Check in with your head. Before we start moving the pelvis, roll your head a little side to side. And bring it back to center. Now bring the attention to the lower abdomen, to the low back. And we'll do 12 o'clock pressing down. 
Exhale, pull the navel down, lengthen your low back. Inhale, back to neutral, just like that. Exhale, zip up the belly, press the low back down. Inhale, release that. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Just like that. Now, three o'clock to nine o'clock. Rock the pelvis side to side. Inhale to one side. Exhale to the other side. Inhale, travel back again. Exhale, changing sides. So in this case, not spending much time on either side, just tuning in. Return to center now. Circle all the way around the dial. Start with a strong 12 o'clock. Pull the navel down, tune into the abdominal muscles and roll around your pelvic clock all the way, all the way, all the way. When you're at 12, reverse. Going backwards around the dial. And come back to center. And from here, draw both knees into the chest. Give them a hug. And as you exhale, there's a little bit of that 12 o'clock energy of zipping up the belly, pressing the low back down, and at the same time, resisting the legs into the hands as if they want to escape. And then relax the resistance, keep the shape of the pose. Exhale, resist again. Belly pulls down, legs resisting to the arms. Relax the effort one more time. Exhale, resist. Now keep breathing, but retain the resistance. Nice and strong. Is the neck tense? Can the neck relax a little while the back works? And then release. Arms out wide to the sides. And let's sweep the knees from side to side. We'll start with the knees in really close to the chest. And test the water. See how this feels? And okay. As you come back to center, place the feet down. Take your hands behind your head. Sit up style, because yeah, we're doing them. So slow motion sit ups. We use that 12 o'clock that gradual pulling in of the abdomen to help us here. Exhale, pull the navel down and peel your head, your neck, your shoulders up and pause once you're all the way up. And then slowly lower down. Exhale, pull the navel to the floor and peel your way up. Slowly lower down. Really take your time with the lowering, especially. Now, when you come down this time, stay low. Raise the legs in the air, bend about 90 degrees. Remember, if your low back likes it more to have the knees a little closer, then bring the knees a little bit closer to, more to your chest. And from here, same thing, nice and slow. We'll just do a few, because we've been already in this direction for a bit. Exhale, pulling the navel to the spine and slowly peeling up. Pause for a moment when you're lifted. And then slow, 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 slowly lower down. Two more like that, really slow, building the strength in the muscles. 
that help us to lower slowly. This can really help tight backs. Speaking of tight backs, we're going to address those in a moment. Open your arms out wide and then swing your knees toward, toward me, <laughs> okay? Wherever your screen is, swing your knees toward the screen. Leave your legs over there. If your body wants a blanket or a pillow or something between the knees, you can. We're going to do twisty sit-ups. So hands behind the head here. And remember, it's this side rib, side waist area that we're looking to cinch up as we come up. So don't try to add to the twist. You're already in the twist. As you exhale, pull the navel in and lift up. So your head is going toward the hip that's facing the ceiling and then slowly lower down. Exhale, peeling up. And you'll notice one shoulder blade slowly lower down. One shoulder blade will come up willingly. The other one, not so much. See if you can get the not so much shoulder blade to lift a bit. Exhale, zip up the belly, peeling away from the floor and nice and slowly on the way down. Just like that, peeling up and pausing at the top. Inhaling back down. And one more time, pausing at the top, but we'll stay a little while longer. And ease your way down. Release the arms, bring them out to the sides. Pull the knees in, zip up the belly, bring the knees back to center. Now, if you feel crooked, you can squiggle your hips and get back to center. Rock a little bit here, and then take the knees over to the other side. I know you know just where we're headed, so knees on this side, hands in the sit-up position, and the same thing as we exhale, cinching the side of the waist and coming straight up toward the hip that's facing the ceiling, and slowly lowering down. I know for me, one side, it's easier to lift that, that other shoulder blade, than it is the other side. One, on one side, it just doesn't want to be so cooperative. I think it's just not that strong. Exhale, but keep going. Even if this bot, that second shoulder blade is not lifting at all, think of lifting it. It may surprise you. And the last one, hold when you're lifted. Stay there, stay there, stay there. And slowly lower down. Release the arms out to the sides. Come back to center. Place your feet flat on the mat. And heel toe your feet mat width or even a little bit wider than a yoga mat. Tip the knees to the right, leave them there. Reach your left arm overhead. So we were in our ab work, we were contracting the hip flexors, and now on the left side, you're lengthening them. Take another breath really long from your left arm all the way down the abdomen to the left leg. Open the arms out to the side, sweep the knees over to the left, now the right arm, reaching overhead, and lengthen. If you are holding a tape measure between your right knee and your right hand, it would get just a little bit longer. I know you can't really hold anything with your kneecap, but you get the idea. Inhale, one more breath here, nice and long. Exhale, release, bring the arms back out to the side, the knees to center, walk the feet back in, and hug the knees into the chest this time. 
If it feels good, pulling the navel down and peeling the head up in a fetal, very compact position. If it feels nice to do the resisting of the legs into the arms, you can do that. You can press the low back down into the mat if that feels good. And slowly lower back down. Touch the feet down flat to the mat. Oh, let's do one more thing since we're, we're doing a little bit of extra core down here. Take your legs up in the air. So if your hamstrings are tight, leave the knees bent as long as the legs are high up in the air. This will work just fine for us. And if you want to straighten your legs more, you can. Zip up your belly, pull your navel down, and pick your bum up and then back down. I'm using my hands, palms down, for a bit of support and also for a bit of leverage to help with this lifting business. So that'll help to stabilize and I'm lifting and lowering. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't lift, if the pelvis doesn't curl up much. Lift up and See if you can come down slowly. Sometimes it's hard to tell, right? If you're lifting up just a touch, coming down slowly doesn't really feel like a lot. The more you can lift, the more time you're going to take to slowly lower so those muscles in the back body and the abdomen get stronger. All right, let's change the pattern and make circles in the air with the feet. Kind of basketball size circles or beach ball size circles. And when your feet go behind, like over your head, that's when the pelvis will lift up. There's a little momentum here to help us. Good, Wait, bring your chin down just a touch, Connie. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Easy in the back of the neck. It doesn't have to be super down. Go the other way. Mm -hmm. And the slower you go and the more the hips lift up on that back side, the more you'll feel this, especially in the core. All right, bring the knees back into the chest, rock gently, relax the neck, let the head roll if it wants to, let it be still if it wants to. Touch the feet down flat to the mat. Bring the arms down near the sides. And let's do a, <clears throat> just your usual bridge pose. Press your feet down like your feet can go down through the mat. Engage your glutes and lift the hips. Slowly lower down, again paying attention to the quality of the movement. As the feet press down, Slowly curl up, tailbone leads the way, low back, then the ribs. And on the way down, it's just the opposite, curling down gradually. A few more like this, peeling up, curling down. One more like that. Stay lifted and pause and pause and pause. Let the back of the neck relax. Slowly, slowly, slowly lower down. Now cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Leave the leg crossed as we come up into bridge pose again. And notice the work, especially in the glutes on the, on the supporting leg. So press the foot down firmly. Again, like it's going through the floor. Squeeze the glutes on that side and lift. And slowly, 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 don't plunk. Slowly, slowly, slowly down. I say don't plunk kind of to remind myself as well. Press the foot down through the floor. Squeeze the glutes. Lift, hold there. 
and slowly, 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 slowly lower down. One more time, we'll lift, we'll hold. Good, hold in your glute bridge, zip up the belly. Good. With an arm showing a thumbs up or thumbs down, how is this in your low back? Especially lay up. So, so, okay, slowly come on down. Uncross the legs. Give the knees a hug in between sides. Rock a little side to side. So on this second side, my invitation is for you to do a little bit of the opposite of whatever your low back likes to do. So if your low back tends to like to be more flat and your pelvis likes to be more tucked under, then allow maybe a touch of back bend. If your low back loves to live in a back bend, then you're going to do the opposite and pull the abs in a little extra and go into this one-legged bridge as if you were curling up into a fetal position. And if you're not sure, do a little of both. For a lot of us, the shape of this pose will, will pull us into <clears throat> more of a back bend. So when in doubt, do the ab stuff extra. So other leg crosses over. And press the supporting foot down really strongly, like it could leave a deep impression down through the floor as the hip lifts up, and then come back down. And remember, it's not how high it lifts, it's the, the quality of the movement more than the lift of it. Good, and back down. Let's do another one and we'll hold this one. Leia, is that any better on that side? Or still so-so? Yeah. You can thumbs up or thumbs down, that's okay. The side's better. <laughs> okay, cool. Slowly lower. Unwind your legs. Take a hand on each kneecap and circle the knees out wide and back together. Go the other way. And then by whatever route you like, if you love crossing the ankles and rocking forward and back, you can do that or roll to your side. And we'll meet up in tabletop pose on hands and knees. Have whatever your body likes for hands and knees, if it likes padding under the knees, if you like to be on your knuckles or forearms rather than the palms. Set this up so that it works in your body today. And then once you are in your tabletop position, Pull the navel up, let the head drop down. Inhale, pull the heart forward. Exhale, lift the navel around the spine, let the head hang. Inhale, the other way. Just like that, take the whole exhale as you come into the Halloween cat position. And the entire inhale as you go the other way. Exhale, lifting the navel, pressing the floor. Inhale, pulling the heart forward. Just like that. Now circle the hips, roll the shoulders. This can be a subtle circling movement. It can also be very large and swoopy. 
The hips can go back so it looks like child's pose for a moment. And then come forward so it looks like, I don't know, not really a push-up, but kind of. <laughs> Now press the hands and send the hips back. Come to child's pose. And see how this arm position works for you. If there's another arm position that feels better in your body, then go ahead and take that. Breathe into the low back as if each inhale could inflate the low back and make space in the low back. And each exhale, the hips settle in, the fold deepens. Take two more generous breaths right here. And then ease your way back to tabletop. And from tabletop, walk the hands even further forward, lower the hips and come into a knee push-up. The feet can be up or the feet can be down. The knees will be on your mat. The hips and shoulders and knees are all making one line and then zip up the belly a lot and lower yourself just a little bit, a little, little knee push up and then back to straight arms, belly is zipped up. Just like that, even squeeze your glutes. It will help the integrity of the pose here. One more small push up and back. And then all the way down, nice and slowly take your time. When you're all the way down, stay there, lower your head. Let's actually, for, let's do this for tight backs. So if you want a blanket or something under the pelvis, have that. If you're comfortable as you are, just fine. Take your right hand under your head like a pillow and you're looking in the direction of your fingers on that hand and your other hand palm down near your hip it's going to support us a little bit as we get ready to do a leg lift once the arms are in position zip up the belly send the pubic bone down towards your mat strongly Reach long through your big toes, so long, so much, that the feet lift up off the mat. And then they lower back down again. If two legs at once feels like it's a bit much for the low back today, alternate. Lengthen and lift one leg and bring it down. Lengthen and lift the other leg and bring it down. If your back, low back in particular is very happy, and you'd like to lift two legs at a time, of course you are welcome to do that. Take care of your body. For the last round, raise one or both legs and hold and hold and hold, and then raise the head and your hand like they're glued together. Breathe here. Glutes are on, legs are long, and slowly lower down. Change the hands. And go to the other side. Other arm is supporting you. Head is looking toward the fingers. Bottom arm, palm down near the hip. Start by zipping up the belly, sending the pubic bone strongly down to your mat lengthening the legs so much that the tops of the feet lift up and either one leg lifting and lowering, alternating 
or both legs. Sometimes if my back is feeling tight, I'll start with the alternating and then that's a way to test the waters and see. And then maybe add a little two legs here and there. Hold the last one. If you're alternating, it's the other leg that did not get held the last time. Breathe here, breathe here, breathe here. Slowly lower down. And then let's do a little chest lift from, oh, I missed the chest lift on this side. Hang on, we'll, we'll catch it all by itself. So come to center so that your arms are in a cactus position, maybe just at the edges of your mat. Give yourself some space. Zip up the belly. Take the pubic bone down to the mat. But this time, as you reach your legs back, all ten toenails are connected to your mat. No foot lifting at all just the chest. Peel your heart forward, 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 forward. The head does lift up, but it's not trying to go high. The chest is trying to reach forward. And then lower down. Just like that, we'll lift and lower. Zip up the belly, pubic bone down. Legs are active to support the back coming up. And lengthening as you lower down. I imagine each time I lower down, I'm longer than when I came up. Abs are on, glutes are active, peel the chest forward and up, and back down. And on the last one, stay lifted. Stay lifted with the abs on, stay lifted with the glutes active, stay lifted, maybe raise the arm. If your arms would like to do something interesting, they can reach back behind you, out to the sides, or overhead if you like. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure the abs are still on, glutes are still on, and the ten toenails are all still on your mat. For the last two breaths, if the toes want to lift up, they can. Breathe, breathe. Three. And then bring the hands back to your mat and slowly lower everything back down. Bend the knees and swing. Swing the feet side to side. Come back to center and very slowly, gradually zip up the belly, press yourself up. It's a knee push up to start, but then it's child's pose. Hips come back, arms reach forward, and we breathe, and breathe, and breathe. From child's pose, walk your hands over to one side. Side bending. Breathe into the side where there's extra space right now. Walk the hands to the other side. Breathe into that side. Walk back to center when you're ready. And come to our tabletop position. Take your right arm out to the side and do the dive through shoulder thread the needle. So right arm out to the side 
and then dive the arm all the way through until you're on your right shoulder on the side of your head. Chest is turned toward the arm that's on the floor. And then the left hand, it can stay on your mat and give a little bit of push for leverage. It can reach out on the floor at some angle. Or if you like to take the left arm up in the air or reach behind like you're trying to get something in your right front pocket. Make sure that your neck feels okay with whatever arm position you are in right now. And take three breaths with a really long exhale. Normal inhale, stretch out the exhale. Stretch out the exhale. Stretch out the exhale. If the top arm is round, bring the palm to your mat and Exhale, press the floor away, relax the neck as you come up. Take the left arm out to the side, dive it all the way through until you're on the shoulder and the side of the head, breathing in, breathing out. Use the other arm either for leverage, to reach to the sky, or to reach around your back. Breathing in, breathing out. Stretch out the exhale. Stretch out the exhale. Stretch out the exhale. Bring the right palm to your mat and on your next exhale, press the floor, return to center. And then walk both arms forward, this time a kneeling puppy stretch for the shoulders. Now in this case, a lot of times we do this really straight, like we're getting when we're getting ready for down dog. But in this case, if you like, you can melt your chest. Do this more as kind of a back bendy sensation. Notice what your low back is doing. Zip up your belly. Lengthen your low back a lot and breathe, breathe. And then, Connie, you can relax your low back a little bit and let it melt into a back bend if it wants to. And Leah, you're going to do extra abs while still lingering in the shoulder stretch. Yeah, I know you. I know that low back. And Dana, you're going to split the difference because you're pretty neutral. Take two more deep breaths right here. Walk the hands gradually back in. And from here, go ahead and take a down dog. A sweet down dog. You all know the pose. This is going to be your favorite kind of down dog. The hands as wide as you want them. The feet as wide as you want them. Take a moment to bend one knee and stretch the back of the other leg. Change sides, breathe here. 
Maybe pedal the feet a little bit. And then find your comfortable down dog. Check in with your hands. Are they pressing e evenly? Check in with your neck. Can the head be kind of relaxed? Ears roughly alongside the upper arms. The spine is nice and long. And the tops of the thighs, as if I were standing behind you, tugging the tops of your thighs to the ceiling behind you. So the legs are active in a way that helps to almost traction your back here. Now if you need to come down sooner, by all means do so. Take care of yourself. If it's okay, stay here for a few more breaths. Easy in the neck. Benefits of an active inversion here. Slowly, slowly, shift your hips forward, turn this into plank. The feet may need to squiggle back a little so you have plenty of room. And then pull your belly in and press the floor away and come back to down dog. Again, if your body's like, oh, this is a bit much for today, take rest. Bring the knees down whenever they need to be. Round your back, shift forward into plank, top of a push-up, and then lift the hips, shift back to down dog. Do that again a couple more times, rounding your back as you go into plank, and then once you're in plank, kind of straightening things out. Lift the navel, press the floor away, down dog. One more time. Moving into plank, rounding on the way in, pausing when you get there. Hold right there, hold right there, hold right there. Lean the hips to one side and bring them back. Lean the hips to the other side and bring them back. The toes can move a little bit. Keep the shoulders steady to one side and then the other again. And then press back to down dog. Walk your hands and feet together. Stand folded over your legs. You might hold the elbows. You might sway. Let your hands and wrists and arms and shoulders relax. Let your neck lengthen. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Release the arms, slowly, slowly, slowly come up. Ragdoll the head, ragdoll the arms. Press the feet, zip up the belly. And when you're all the way upright, circle the arms, inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. A palate cleansing circle with the arms. Inhale the arms out and up overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale the arms overhead and let's turn this into a side bend. Take hold of your right wrist. Up and over. Breathe while you're here. Inhale. Exhale. 
Press the feet and zip up the belly strongly as you come to center. Change the arms. Press into the feet up and over to the other side. Keep a sense of lift in the navel, a sense of integrity here. Breathing in. Breathing out. As we prepare to come up, even before anything has moved, plant your feet a little more firmly and zip up the belly a little more strongly and use that support to bring you to upright. Release the arms. Shoulders, elbows, wrists. Shoulders shrug, elbows lift. Wrists all the way up. And release. Shoulders, elbows, Wrists and release. Take the feet about shoulder width apart and roll one shoulder generously up, back, and down. The other shoulder generously up, back, and down. If you've got room to swoop your arms, kind of like you're doing a big slow motion backstroke, do that. Up and over, a little twist there. Up and over. One more time until you're even. When you're back at center, stay right there. And take your hands. We use the hands to support us and continue this bit of a backbend exploration. So you can choose. I'm going to come up close so you see better. If this position works, you're pressing the, the backs of the hands into the sacrum, not up on the low back, but right at the back of the pelvis. Or you can do this position with the thumbs on the sacrum, holding the sides of the pelvis. Or you can do this if your wrists like that. The main idea is whatever the hand position is, we're aiming to stabilize ourselves. So we're keeping the pelvis right where it is, and then lifting up so that the back bend is happening from here up, from the bottom of the rib cage up. And we're not trying to sharply, it's hard to see this, huh? We're not trying to sharply turn. Can you see how sharp that turn is at the top, at the bottom of my rib cage and the top of my low back? That's one of the easiest places to move, but that also means it's one of the easiest places to get hurt. So we don't want to force all the movement in the one spot. We want to spread it out so we get a nice, long, steady curve all the way up the back. So this is why whatever hand position looks like I'm grabbing my glutes. I'm really trying to stabilize my, my pelvis. Whatever hand position works for you, root down your feet like you're going to make a deep impression, really deep footprints in the mat. Lift your navel a lot. So I could, again, I could go back, but that would hinge that spot between the rib cage and the low back. I don't want to hinge. I want a nice, long, steady curve. Root your feet down deep into the earth. Lift your navel. Lift your chest. And then come any amount back. Keep your legs really active. Your head, I haven't talked about it yet, but your head can go wherever your head is happy. Now, don't let your head just hang back there. Do breathe. And test the waters. If your head is leaning back, can you make some sound? Can you la, 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 while you're back there? And if you can, well, that's a good sign. If, if you can't make any noise, your head's probably not in a good position. Slowly bring the chin down. Root down into the feet, zip up the belly strongly, 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 strongly as you come up. And then let's slide down the front. Bend the knees, go slowly, 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 bend forward, slowly, slowly, slowly. Let the head hang. 
While you're down there, take the feet a little wider. So bring the feet wider, a little wider than the mat. Walk both hands over to your right leg. So there's a little bit of a twist built in here. And then check in while your hands are over on your right leg. How's your left low back feel? And notice what it feels like if you pull the navel in a little, or you relax a little, or maybe you breathe a little into the left low back. Give yourself room in that area, even if it feels very subtle. Walk the hands to the other side. Same thing over here. Plant the feet while your hands are on the left leg. Bring your attention into the right low back. Deep breath. Let gravity help you here. And walk your hands back to center. Scooch your feet even further apart. Bend one knee and then the other. Your hands can walk on the floor if the floor is close and you want to. Your hands can be in the air or you can lean into a leg or two. Let's go a little bit side to side. And then lean over to one side, like a sideways lunge. Breathe here. Lean over to the other side. Breathe here. Come on back to center. Walk the feet a little closer to each other, maybe shoulder width now. Root down into your feet, zip up your belly, and ragdoll the shoulders and head slowly, gently, until you're upright. Then inhale, one last big circle around you. Exhale, hands to the heart. Release the arms and let's have a seat. So as you sit down, stretch your legs out for a moment. Don't mind me as I get really close to you. <laughs> Bend the knees, place the feet flat on the mat. Curl yourself down and back. Lift yourself up to sit tall. You can add a little back bend here, especially in the upper chest. Slowly curl your way back. The pelvis is tilting back. Pull the navel in, and then slowly come up. Little back bend at the top. One more time. Moving down, back, maybe a little further back. Maybe hands free for a moment. Come on up, back bend. And then come all the way down. And as you lie down here, bring your right knee 
in like the right leg of happy baby. You can hold behind the thigh, you can walk the hand up toward the shin. The choice is yours. But as you're holding just this one leg of happy baby, bring your knee a little bit further down toward your armpit, chest, the right side of your mat. And rock, rock a little here. That's it. Then unwind, <clears throat> excuse me, unwind the leg, same leg, same knee bent, but it's out to the side. Rock the shin side to side, across your body. Now use both hands and bring the shin in towards your chest. See if you can find that outer right hip stretch that we sometimes get in thread the needle. Now if you feel a little bit of the hip stretch, try stretching your bottom leg out long, sleeping pigeon. If that position doesn't agree with you, absolutely feel free to bend the bottom knee again, or if you want to go to thread the needle, you can do that as well. Whatever works, <clears throat> I'm going to take a sip of water, whatever works to give you that nice, hip stretch in the right side. Unwind gently. Hug both knees, stretch both legs lightly up in the air. And for a moment, move around. Then let's change sides. <clears throat> right foot flat on the mat. Left leg does happy baby first. Holding wherever it works for you, make sure that if the hand is up on the foot, that your neck is happy about the decision. One leg may feel different than the other, so honor what this side needs. Work in a way that challenges your edges, and not just the edges of sensation in the body, but also the edges of how kind you can be, how compassionate can you be with yourself right now. Stretch that muscle. Strengthen that muscle. And now bring the leg so that you're rocking the whole shin using both hands rock the whole shin side to side across the body bring the shin in to the chest if you feel a bit of a hip stretch stay there if you want to straighten out the bottom leg for sleeping pigeon do that or if you prefer thread the needle for another variation do that Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. When you're ready, unwind, bring the knees gently into the chest, circle them any way they want to go, reverse the circles. And take a twist of your choice. Deep breath. <clears throat> so maybe six breaths on each side. And bring your attention to the side of your ribcage that's facing the ceiling. 
and send some extra breath into that space. When you're ready, change sides. Deep breath in. Gentle breath out. When you're ready, return to center. Hug the knees gently rock. And if we're lucky, you'll hear music right about now. Good, good. Thanks, Dana. When you're ready, sit up for Shavasana. You can adjust the volume on your device so that it works for you. Leg support, big blanket, a blanket if you want a little extra warmth. Breath flow in. Let the breath flow.
Gently deepen the breath. Draw the knees in, rock gently side to side. Make your way over to one side. Press up to seated. Bring your hands right over, palms right over your courageous, compassionate heart. Feel the aliveness in your body. Feel the way the breath moves your hands. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe and at ease. May you have no dogs barking in the background like I have at my house right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> well, we waited until Shavasana was over, so there's that. <laughs> well trained. Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank I you. I liked the music. Yeah.